get some straight talk from New Jersey. Um, I'm glad to be back here. And I have to tell you, it was not a layup that I'd be here. Far from it. I've watched our country over the last decade. It seems to me get smaller and smaller. And smaller in every way. Smaller in the way we talk to each other. Smaller in the way we look at each other. Smaller in the things that we talk to each other about. Smaller in the issues that we cared enough to get angry about. And Donald Trump made us smaller by dividing us even further and pitting one group against another, different groups pitted against different groups every day. How will you win over Trump voters who are so attached to one charismatic man, uh, considering you don't seem to be appealing to the larger Republican uh, voters? Thank you. Well, I'm not nearly as pessimistic as you are. Um, <laughs> there is no such thing as Trump voters. He doesn't own them. He didn't take title to them. They're not one of his buildings. They're not one of his failed casinos in New Jersey, okay? They're not that wreck he's got in Las Vegas, okay? The, they, he doesn't own them. They voted for him. By the way, I voted for him twice. Okay? Am I a Trump voter then? <laughs> Hell no, man. If Donald Trump is indicted and you become president, will you pardon him? Well, I, I have to tell you the truth. I can't completely answer that until I know what he was charged with and convicted of. Okay? So... But, but I'm not going to dodge the answer, okay? But I will tell you as a prosecutor, if I believe someone has gotten a full and fair trial in front of a jury of their peers, and especially someone in public life who committed those crimes when they held a public trust, I can't imagine pardoning them. By accepting a pardon, the person must acknowledge their guilt. That's why... I'm completely in the clear. <laughs> completely in the clear. It will never happen. That will be the shortest phone conversation I will ever have as president. I'll think about you, and I'll pick up the phone and say, Donald, I'm willing to give you a pardon, but you have to admit you were guilty. He would say, I will never, ever, ever do that. And I'd say, have a nice day and hang up, and then I'll be done. So I am, as a practical matter, I am in absolutely no danger, I don't think, of having to make your decision, but I think it's an important question. I'd like a 10% raise. And your boss said, oh, I don't really think we can do that. We have candidates for president who say, we shouldn't care about what's happening in Ukraine. We shouldn't care that Russia wants to take a free and freedom-loving country and put it back under its thumb. But that's not America's concern. We have candidates for president who are talking about issues that are so small that sometimes it's hard to even understand them. But let me tell you why they're talking about those small issues. For the very same reason that Leaders who are pretenders have always talked about small issues to divide you further. <laughs> and when I said to him, I can't do it, it's against the law, I said, fight in the courts. The question is, do you, not if you want America to be first or not, it's how. How do we become first? And you have people in my party, our party, who are saying, fill the moat, pull up the drawbridge, and let's not worry about the rest of the world, everybody. We've got plenty of problems here, and we've got to fix these problems that we've got here, and we can't afford to engage with the world. Well, guess what? When we stop engaging with the world, we're no longer going to be the biggest economy in the world. We're not. They're going to trade with China. And then China's going to put the screws to us and say, hey, you want to continue to trade 
with us to another country, you can't trade with America anymore. I'm wondering if you could talk about your opinion on the Dobbs Supreme Court decision and the future of reproductive justice and abortion access for women in America, and if you support all of our freedoms or maybe just freedoms for choice view. Oh, I think that Dobbs decision was the right decision because I believe it was Roe versus Wade was constitutionally flawed. I think any taking of a life like that, of an innocent life, is wrong and it's a tragedy. And so here we are in this horrible situation of having to make choice. But you know what? No one ever said this was going to be easy. Governing ourselves is not easy. There are going to be lots of really difficult questions. This is probably one of the most fraught moral questions that this country has dealt with and that countries all over the world deal with. And that's why I think it's best decided by the people in each state individually. So thanks for coming tonight. I appreciate it.